Hey guys, um, I wanted to do a video, like every other video I've said in the intro, uh, but I really wanted to make a video today because um, someone made a comment on the uh, bottles video that I made a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, it was basically, he was a bit confused of what was uh, being shown in the video because bottles uh, changed their UI and UX design of their app. And so, like I said, he was really confused and um, the guy, one of the people in my comments um, corrected something um, that was um, newer or whatever that you didn't have to do and he thanked him for it, which is awesome. I love when people do that. Uh, but the app was really outdated and the video, honestly, it was really shit. Um, I didn't really do a really good job with it. I just played music in the background. No, I wasn't talking over it. Um, and I did like a sped up thing a lot of times within the video and didn't really explain uh, that much. So I wanted to make a video on bottles uh, today about the, you know, like the newest version of bottles. And I wanted to show you guys how to create a bottle, uh, download uh, YNGE stuff um, and uh, different DLLs and explain what's basically what's going on when you create a bottle and yeah if you haven't noticed I've also moved distros I've moved to pop OS uh, since basically I was using Nobora uh, and I moved the uh, desktop environment I was on the KDE Nobora version I wanted to move to GNOME and I didn't like how all the KDE apps were still installed and the core functionality of KDE Plasma was like all like still installed and I was getting updates for it so I was like trying to uninstall it but it wouldn't let me there were certain packages that just would not remove even if i had pseudo permissions and i probably had to sign out and go into the um what's it called like the terminal screen uh without logging in and log in as root but i think if i because i was checking comments if i removed the um kde desktop environment like the main one that was installed when I first installed Nobora, then I might have uh, led into issues. And I was really enjoying GNOME. And I was like, well, I haven't tried Pop OS in a very long time. I think it was like a year ago. Um, I like last tried it and I did not have a good experience with it. Um, I was having a lot of like issues and stutters um, and some updates weren't uh, going through uh, properly. But I was like, you know, what? I'll give it another try since it's on an LTS release and they're backporting packages and all that. It's pretty stable. It's built off Ubuntu. And I do actually like the Pop OS experience that you get. And there's a lot of things that like are pre-included for you that you don't have to go out of your way to grab some app like a tweaks app or extension manager to um, install certain extensions that you need, like a dock or whatever, since GNOME doesn't come with a dock. The dock's like um, in the foreground. You have to like tab, uh, use your super key to see the dock, which I don't really like. I usually add an extension like the um, dock or the um, that other panel extension. Uh, but on Pop OS, uh, they already have the dock already there. And uh, there's a bunch of other little things that are in settings. Anyways, it's not about a video about Pop OS, it's about how to use bottles. So, uh, basically, we want to install bottles. I actually already did the video a couple of um, uh, minutes ago, but the video uh, got fucked. So that was really nice. So I'm redoing this video. So what I have to do now is basically uninstall um, bottles. And also, I'll uh, actually, I'll show you, uh, basically, if you install any Flatpak app, and this is how I um, uninstall um, Flatpak applications fully, because usually when you click uninstall on the store, it doesn't actually delete the application. It deletes a few things, but it doesn't actually delete the folder. Um, so when you install, reinstall that app, it's going to install really fast because it's actually kept the files, like the cache and stuff. Um, already installed. I don't, know the, don't know the specifics, but um, it does keep the files there. So, uh, to remove bottles fully, uh, so we can go through the setup page, we want to remove this to rubbish bin um, and then empty it. And now, if we go to the pop shop, um, we can click uninstall and it should remove it completely, as we can see here. So, now we're going to click install and it should create a new directory here. Um, it should be called bottles. And basically what I was saying, um, you want to grab bottles from your store, so for me it's the Pop Shop, um, or uh, if you're on like a GNOME, you go to the GNOME software store and you want to grab the Flatpak version. Do not grab the ones that are maintained by um, Fedora um, or the AUR if you're on like um, Arch. Uh, I think the AUR does get updated pretty quickly, so in terms of um, updates, 
and AUR is probably fine, uh, but for the um, Fedora one, the Fedora one hasn't been updated for a while, I don't think. Last time I tried it, it wasn't updated for a very, uh, very uh, long time. But you want to get the Flatpak version, and if we go back in, and then um, it's not here. I think I have to launch the app to actually for it to be created. So now we open it. Um, and basically when it says starting up, it should come up and say it's going to fetch some packages and download 20 kilobyte, kilobytes of uh, packages. But basically you want to wait for that to finish and it should enter with like um, a welcome screen and you can go through the certain steps as we can see here. And it says welcome to bottles, run Windows software on Linux. So it tells you Windows and Bottles. Bottles uses compatibility runners to provide isolated containerized Windows-like environments where programs run. Uh, almost done. So now we click continue and it's going to set everything up for us so then we can actually create a bottle and install um, things that we need to run Windows apps. All right, and now, uh, as we can see here, it says already. So now we click start using bottles and we are in the actual app. So now, um, it should come up with the library one, which well, I'll talk about that soon, uh, but basically we want to go to bottles. So if we want to create a new bottle, we can either click the big blue button right here. So it's create a new bottle or we can do the plus one. So we go create a new bottle and we are going to be installing the EA desktop app. Um, so we want to, I always, whenever I make a bottle, I always uh, name it the uh, application of the launcher because basically um, I only use like Blizzard and EA for some of my games so when I create a bottle I call it Blizzard it doesn't matter you can call it whatever the hell you want um, in the end it just you just need to know the name of it uh, it doesn't get used in any other way I don't think uh, but basically I'm gonna call it EA click create and as we can see here, it is now creating a bottle. And we can look at the logs of what it's doing. Um, you can see here, it's got a wine config, it's being updated, it's running as flat packs, sandbox environment, user directory, optimizing environment, applying environment, the gaming environment. So now it's gonna install DXVK, it's gonna install some Microsoft DLLs, some DirectX 9 stuff. Um, and basically, um, if you're gonna install any other apps as well, I would just, in just continue to create a bottle in the gaming bottle. Don't choose the application bottle, I would say. Um, I think the application bottle just removes like a couple of things, um, while the gaming bottle um, just like installs like all this stuff, like DLLs, DXVK, uh, DirectX 12 as well, which is DKD 3D, I think the name of it's called, um, and some like uh, Microsoft fonts as well. And I will see you guys when this is um, finished. It also might take a while. Okay, just saying, it might take a bit. All right, and now it is finished. That only took like a couple of minutes, I would say. Maybe like five minutes. Um, not five, maybe less than that. Uh, but now that it is created, we can go into the bottle. So, excuse me. Um, all the bottles that get created will be here in our library. I'll explain that soon, like I said before. But basically, um, you can enter the bottle and we can now go to the options section. So basically, uh, settings is where you'll be choosing all your types of different components, display stuff, uh, performance option, which is basically like different plugins that you can use. So you can use like Game Mode, which improves your performance. Um, you can preload game files, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Um, you can do OBS Game Capture, uh, which is like a plugin for OBS that's like uses the Vulkan and OpenGL window thing to record gameplay, which I've used multiple times for um, the gaming benchmarks um, or monitor performance, which is Mango HUD. And basically all of this stuff, you need flat pack versions for this to actually work because this app is a flat pack. And so um, it needs access to the flat pack versions of them, not the um, like regular versions for me, like Mango HUD. I would need to go grab the flat pack version from the Mango HUD GitHub page. Um, now, uh, we can grab uh, the runner. So by default, uh, it's gonna use Soda, uh, whichever latest version. And Soda um, is a good, uh, definitely a good runner, but it doesn't get enough updates, I would say. Um, it's release schedule is a bit slow. And so sometimes um, apps will break regularly like the EA desktop and Valve usually fixes it, but uh, you know, we're running bottles and if you're gonna run Soda, 
and that application is broken, then well, Soda is useless. Um, so you're gonna have to use a different runner that gets more updates. So this is where you go to the hamburger menu. So we go, not the help page. <laughs> we go to our preferences, which will bring up this. And as we see here, um, we can have a look at integrations as well, which uh, means basically it will list um, different uh, application programs in the bottles, uh, which are enabled, uh, but it says requires Steam for Windows installed in the bottle. So I would have to install the um, actual Steam Windows version in the bottle for this list to show up. I'm not gonna do that. Um, and another thing you can do, if you have a second SSD or a second uh, one terabyte hard drive that you have all your games installed, I would highly recommend that you select and create a bottles directory um, on that second drive and then you add it here so then all the bottles and everything you create on the second drive that's what i used to do um, but now i don't really do that since i use lutris um, and that works differently uh, but Besides that, we want to go to the runners option. And as you can see here, we can grab all types of different runners that it provides that we can just grab here and click download. So not like with Steam um, or Lutris where you have gonna have to use like an injector like um, Proton Up QT, which will like inject it. This, you can just uh, download it straight from here and we'll install it in your bottles environment and you can use it at any of your bottles uh, that you have traded. So we're gonna use uh, the GE, one GE Proton 735 version which is created by Glorious Egg Roll. Uh, so we're gonna click download and it should download it, install it. And it's relatively quick. Um, as you can see here, it's downloading it. I have a pretty high um, speed internet connection. I am using Starlink, so I do get a, a pretty decent download speed. Um, and now it's installing it. And... <laughs> Whenever it wants to install it. And now it's installed. Uh, we can look at the directory as well, which is in um, our home directory. If you click properties, we can expand it. Let's see here, it's in our home directories, wherever uh, bottles installed, which is in like var, dot var slash app. Um, but basically now it, it is installed. Uh, we can grab some of the other ones as well. We can grab Lutris's versions, which I won't use, and uh, Kathy's version, which I did have to use when Overwatch 2 launched because it had weird issues. Uh, but uh, I would highly recommend you just stick to Wine GE or Soda if you don't have any problems. So now what we're going to do is go back to the EA bottle, go to settings, go to runner, and we're going to select Wine GE Proton 735. And it should select it, and then it should use it um, right now, as you can see. Um, now, um, to learn about this, these two things here, uh, DCK is a... As to improve DirectX 9 slash 10 slash 11 compatibility by translating it to Vulkan. Great explanation of what it does. Um, same with DirectX 12. It does the exact same thing, just it is only DirectX 12 and it translates it to Vulkan. Uh, for me, it's disabled, but I might actually have to use it for um, Battlefield 2042, since if that gets supported, um, I would have to use it since the game is running on DirectX 12. And uh, the synchronization is basically how the windows moves around on your display manager or compositor, uh, whichever you're using X11 or Wayland, doesn't really matter. Um, and you basically, I always select F-Sync because people said that it works better with Windows applications by using F-Sync. So I've always used F-Sync in my bottles. Um, so use that. And then basically we go to install programs. Now there's some other, if you go out of here, there's um, a dependencies, which is basically all of the DLLs, runtime, fonts, bloody anything that's got to do with with Windows, um, you can install it here. Most of the stuff is already installed for the um, gaming orientated and when we install the program it will also grab more DLLs because if we check here and we show the manifest um, which should bring up this, we can see that um, the dependencies it needs like Mono, Gecko, DirectX 9, all fonts, D3D, Compiler 43, all of those things and the parameters that it used, like I said, he was using F Sync, um, the discrete GPU, yada yada. Cool. Um, so now we click the download button on the EA launcher because that's the one that we're going to use. Um, so now it should launch this page here, which we can click start installation. So now what it's going to do is it's going to grab the Windows dependencies, it's going to grab 
a bunch of different things, including the EA uh, launcher, and then it should launch the EA uh, actual install like it is on Windows, and it will launch that and we can actually install the EA app. All right, and now as we can see here, it is processing the installer steps. So now uh, this window pops up, which is the actual application of the EA installer. So now we can click let's go and it should just install the application just like that. And it'll install pretty quickly since I have an NVMe Gen 4 drive, so it should install pretty quickly. Uh, but just wait for that to install. And then this window should finish after this um, finishes installing. And as we can see, EA Launcher is now available in the programs view. Completed. Um, so now we can click on show programs. So now, um, as you can see here, um, oh snap, it crashed. EA yeah, yeah, ran into the problem. That's fine. Click exit. Um, so I'm just going to force quit it. As we can see here, um, our bottles have been uh, created. Wait, our bottle has been created. We have installed the EA app and our programs um, have been installed here. So now we have the EA client, the EA launcher and the EA updater. We don't want to use the launcher or the updater. We just want to use the client because the updater will launch itself when there is a updated needed. Um, but now we're going to introduce to the library. So basically every bottle has its own bottle, it has its own applications and we can and add those little applications to the library so that you don't actually have to go into the bottles to launch the application. So for this one, if we add it normally uh, with the name EA client, it's going to show a UFC2 um, image, which is not what we want. We want the EA icon of the actual, like the branding of the EA desktop picture on that um, little, what is that, a rectangle, something like that. So basically we want to remove it, uh, we want to go back and we want to rename it here. So I'm going to do capital P because there's two different images that show up. Uh, if you do a lowercase p for play, um, it will just show up with the normal EA icon. But if you do it with the capital P, it will show a FIFA uh, player, which I like a bit more honestly. Um, so click add to library after you've renamed it. And as you can see here, it's right here, but we can click launch. Now it says launching EA Play. It should come up um, normally and we can now sign in. And the, like I said, the EA desktop app, it's a bit uh, glitchy sometimes when it introduces a new update. So uh, that's why I suggested to use the YNGE version because that's more updated than the Soda version because every time I've tried to install the EA app, the Soda uh, version, the latest Soda runner, always has issues with um, loading the actual like interface because the interface runs like off a, it's like a web uh, interface. Uh, and it always has issues while the YNGE version um, has like never had issues because it gets updates more regularly. So you want to sign in obviously and I will skip this part. And as we can see here I have signed in and now we're just we're in the app and the icon even comes up here and may come up with a it's got a Qt web engine process um, you can ignore that um, usually that is fine. It should load as you can see here. Uh, and there you go. So now we can go to my collection and you can download any of the games. Hopefully I can download Battlefield 2042 soon. Uh, but EA doesn't really want to enable Proton support, even though, I mean, EAC Proton support, even though Apex Legends has fucking uh, the EAC runtime working perfectly fine within Proton, which is really funny how they, they won't enable it on there. Uh, I think it's just the developers. I've asked plenty of times on Twitter and on the EA forums, but they just continuously ignore us for some reason. They don't want to get, give a clear answer as to why they don't want to um, bring it or if they are going to bring it, but hopefully that gets um, supported. For now, I'll just play Battlefield 1, 5, and 4 because that's actually something that I can uh, do. So that's basically about the end of the video. We go back to bottles, we go to the bottle, we go to EA, and basically what you wanna do here is click four stop all processes because even if you close this, I don't think it closes all the processes because I've checked before. Um, if you wanna see what processes are running, we can actually go to the task manager, click refresh here, and we can see all the processes that are running uh, for the EA app to work. 
So we click false stop and this will close all the processes that are running in the background, including the app and you are done. Now, if we check the task manager, there may only be a couple of things, which is basically for the bottle to run, I think, some other wine stuff. That's fine. You can always leave that in the background. And that's basically it. That's if it was uh, the Blizzard app as well, that would be pretty easy. Um, but yeah, um, thank you guys for watching the video. If you've um, skipped through, that's perfectly fine. Um, and if you, you know, have any issues, pop them down in the comments. I'm always, you know, there to uh, help people if they have any issues or anybody else that's in the comments that wants to help somebody else, go ahead. Um, or if you have you know, made any mistakes or whatever, pop them down in the comments. Um, if you guys want to like the video, you can. Uh, you can turn on the ring uh, bell notification and if you want to you can even subscribe to the channel i don't really care if you subscribe or not um this is just you know a tutorial or to help people out with bottles because there's not a lot of tutorials around with linux oriented things i would say there's only a couple of people that um do tutorials and those are only some of the big linux channels um but i was just out there to put one out because someone had an issue um, with the opposite uh, video that I did with bottles, which was a while ago, it was like a month or two ago, and that was really outdated. So I was like, you know what? I'll make a video, even though it's literally 4 a.m. at the moment. I'm making this video, and that's because everyone else is asleep. So I'm able to like, you know, make this video without anybody interrupting me. Um, but that's basically it, guys. If you, um, you know, like I said, if you want to like the video, you can. If you want to subscribe, you can. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.